If you are here, you know it's very common to face a Excel assessment test when you are being hired for a job. So in this video, I want to look at eight different questions that might help you into a job interview. So let's get started with the first three sets of questions. Use Excel functions to answer the questions. And then we have the questions and uh, a answer area right here to fill in with the formula or with the functions. And here to the right, we have a data set where probably we're going to need to use this data set to ensure to solve the problems. Question one, why is the total sold? And then question two, what is the average sales amount? Question three, how much was sold in January? But let's start with the first question. What is the total sold? To answer this question, we're going to need to use the data set. Let's say the total sold, of course, I have three different columns, such as date, month, quantity, and total. As I want to have the total sold, I can have I can do here the addition of all those values that make up the total column. And to do it, there is many different functions and formulas in Excel, such as equal sign sum function. If I double click in this function, one, two, I can select, click, hold, and drag down a range to be used in this addition. And if I hit enter, I'm gonna have here the final result. Simple as that. There's another way to use a sum function in Excel. And by the way, if any value here in the list changes, let's say instead of using this $12,000, I want to input here a larger value, such as 99,000. If I hit enter, look what is going to happen with the answer. One, two, three. Now this cell is retrieving a, the new value because I just update here. But let me undo this action. Another way to use the sum function is equal sign sum function, double click, one, two. Instead of selecting a small range like this, you can either use this range or you can click over the letter that corresponding to the column. Because that way you can select the entire column. And if you hit enter, you're going to have the same result as before, the correct result. But anyway, let's go now to the second question. What is the average sales amount? The average sales amount. So let's say if you have a sales that's the first one here, 17, and then 14, 14 again, 12. What is the average of all those values? There is different methodologies that we can use or calculations that we can use to solve this question. Equal sign, the first one, sum function, double click, one, two, and then add up all the values that we have. And if I hit enter, as we can notice, we're going to have the same result as before. But what we can do now is we can divide by the quantity. So let's say I have one, two, three, four, five. Let's say, let's pretend I have 20 different rows. So if I take this value right here, one, two, and immediately after the last parenthesis, I divide by 20 and press enter, I'm going to have the average. But I, there is a smarter way to do it. Equal sign, average function, one, two. And then again, the average function can be used either selecting a small range like this or click over the entire column. And if you hit enter, you're going to have the correct result, the average of the values that you selected. Now, in the third question, we have something different. How much was sold in January? We need to be mindful here because it's not the same question as the question one. What is the total sold? Here is what is the total sold uh, for January month? So we have a criteria. And uh, the way we can solve this problem, there is many different ways. The first one, equal sign, some function, double click on two. And because we cannot add up all the values, but just the values that corresponding to January, such as this value right here, and then this one right here, and so forth. We are already within the sum function, so you can choose the first value, and then comma, go to the second one, and then comma, and so forth. However, we have a problem with this calculation. Maybe we can miss some value right here, because there is a lot of values, a lot of rows to look for. So to prevent any type of error, we can use equal sign sum if function. Because with the sum if, we are not going to add up all the values, but just the values if, sum if, if a criteria is met, let's say. So double click one, two. And the first thing that the sum if is going to ask is about that range. And this range right here, this first argument, it stands for the range where we have the criteria. And the range where we have the criteria is the month column. So let me select either the, the range that I need or click over the letter I to select everything in this column and then comma. 
My criteria is going to be January. However, instead of using January, I need to use the way it's written right here, Jan, for example, to match those informations. And to input Jan right here, I cannot just write like this. I need to type in in between quotations because it's a text that is going to that is going into a formula. So open quotations and then Jan close quotations. Choma. Now what is the sum range or the things that I want to add up if my criteria is met is here in the column K. Now I can hit enter and I'm going to have here the return of the value, not for the total sold, however, just for the sales for January month. What we can do here too is select this cell and go to home tab and change the format to a dollar one, a currency format. Okay. And the cool interesting thing here is if I change, double click in the formula and change the criteria instead of using Jan, maybe I can change to February, for example. If I hit enter, the result is going to be automatically updated for me using now the new criteria. Now, the fourth question that we have, again, we need to use the same pattern that is using Excel functions to solve the problems. Here we have one problem that is the sales report that uh, the one that I have here to the right, the data set needs to have the cost of the products because as we can notice those cells right here are blank so i need to fill in with the correct cost to be able to calculate the gross profit from the inventory list return the costs of the item so what i need to do is let's take the first item as example item 003 the price is 21 and the gross profit is retrieving 21 however i know that this gross profit here is not properly correct because I need to fill in here the cost to calculate the gross profit. Let's say the cost for the item 3 is $10. And if I hit enter, as we can notice, the gross profit is going to be recalculate for me. But how can I retrieve the item 3, item 2, item 1, all those costs? Instead of manually look for or look up here in the list, take the item 3, okay, $14, go back here, type in manually and so forth. Uh, the way I can do it automatically or as the question stays here using functions, I can use the VLOOKUP function in Excel, equal sign VLOOKUP function. There is many different lookup functions, such as the XLOOKUP function, the HLOOKUP function, and also the lookup function. And we can even use the index coupled with the match function. Uh, those functions can help us to look for something and retrieve the corresponding value. But in this video, I want to show how to use the VLOOKUP function. And of course, if you want to learn more about those lookup functions, I'm going to leave a free video in the description because that way uh, you can see more details about VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, and so forth. So let's go. Equal sign within the first blank cell in the cost. VLOOKUP function, double click, one, two. The lookup value is going to be the item name, the, the one that I have to the left. And then, trauma. The table array that I want to use is going to be where I have the items names, but I also need to select the column to the right and the column to the right. But why is that? Because with the VLOOKUP function, I need to select the entire range that I, going, that I need to use in my calculation, or I need to use the first column because the first column is where I have the lookup values. And I also need to use the third column because the third column is where I have the values to return. So this is why it's important to select everything. And another thing that is very important is whenever you click, hold and drag down a function to make sure all the cells have the same function, all the references are also going to be moved down. So let's say the item, the reference is going to be moved down and also the range that we selected are, is going to be moved down. But I don't want to let the range move down because that way I'm gonna lose the reference. So what I can do is with this selection right here, this range, the, the red one, I can go here to the function, select this range, and then press the F4 key. Because the F4 key is going to lock column and row, column and row. That way, we're going to fix the range in the position, always. Now, let me press here, comma, to move on to another argument, column index number. The column index number is the number, is the column that I want to get back as a result. One, two, three. The third one is the cost. So this is the column that I want to retrieve as a result. Three and then comma. Now the range lookup. 
I want to have an exact match or an approximate match. I want to have an exact match. So double click here, one, two, and then enter. Okay, uh, 14 is the first result that we have, but at the bottom right corner of the cell, let's click, hold, and drag now to make sure we can cope with this function now. And that way we're gonna have all the results. Let's take randomly a item right here. Item eight, 24, this is the cost. I don't know if it's correct, so let's check this item. Item 8, 24. Yeah, it's correct. So this is how we can use the VLOOKUP function to solve this question. And one more thing. The VLOOKUP function, the XLOOKUP, all those lookup functions are very, very important. And to know how to use those functions can really, really help us on a daily basis to either automate tasks or to solve other problems like the ones that we did here. Question number 5 and question number 6. Use a pivot table to summarize the data set into one, freight cost per month, and two, total of deliveries per state code. And here underneath, underneath I have the data set, and I have many different rows, and as we can also notice many different columns. And I need to summarize this data set, first of all, using the second to last column, the freight cost per month. The thing that I, we can see here is, I don't have in this data set the months itself. However, I have the months within the dates. Let's say January 1st of 2025 and so forth. But there is no a specific column with the months, January, February, March, and so forth. Uh, and this is one of the benefits to use a pivot table in Excel. It's in some cases faster and easier than use functions and try to figure out how can we do some calculations and analysis or how can we summarize a large data set. But anyway, let's solve the first question. Freight cost per month. So let's either, you can choose either select everything in the data set or just click it within the data set. And then you can go to insert, pivot table, and there is going to be a new pop-up and you can choose new worksheet or existing worksheet. Let's choose the second option, existing worksheet. And I want to place this pivot table just right here to the right. And then, okay, yeah, this is, our first pivot table. Here to the right, we can see the pivot table fields and the options. Those options are basically the columns that we have, order date, product ID, quantity, and so forth. And here underneath, we have the areas of the pivot table. Filters, columns, rows, and values. Let's say in each one of those rows of the pivot table, I want to have a month. So what I can do is I can take the order date, click, hold, and drag, and drop within the rows area like this now i'm going to have january february march april may and so forth and we can also notice there is this plus sign and if you click in this plus sign you can open up more information about the date but let's say i don't want to be too specific i just want to have the months so you can go here again to the rows click in the days and then remove the fields and again maybe you can click in the order date and then remove and the only information that we're going to keep up with is with the months. Now let's take what we need to do is freight cost per month. Okay, so let's go here to the freight cost, click, hold, and drag, and drop into the values. Because that way, now the values are going to be equal a sum of the freight cost per month, as we can notice right here. So January is equal to $2,000, roughly $2,000, February $1,800, March $2,000, and so forth. Another thing that you can do is select all those values and change the format to a currency one, like this. And we're done. So this is how we can do and use a pivot table in Excel. And we already solved the first question. Now let's go to the second one, total of deliveries per state. So let's click again within the data set and go to insert, pivot tables, existing worksheet. And let's place this one just here to the right of the previous pivot table. And then, okay, let's... First of all, we start with the states. I can take here the state code and click, hold, and drag and release within the rows, the, the rows areas. Now, all the states that I have in the data set are in each one of the, the different rows of my pivot table. But how can I know what is the total of deliveries per state? Basically, it's we need to count, let's say, each one of the rows represents a different delivery. So here in the first row, I have one delivery. And then in the second one is this, the second delivery, and then the third one, and so forth. So basically, we need to count how many times each one of the states codes appears in the list. And to do it, we can use again that state code, click, hold, and drag into the values, because automatically, 
the pivot table is going to count this option that we dropped right here, as we can notice. So AK, 20, AL, 17, and so forth. So we're done with those two questions. Now let me close this right panel and let's move on to the last two questions that we need to solve. One, create a line chart to show the evolution of the stock's value over the months. Number two, in order to improve the data set, highlight the quantities in stock using an automatic gradient. Uh, as the data set I have, month, quantity received, and total cost. First of all, the question number one is telling us to use the months and the total cost per month, the evolution. So I need to do as I did here, select both of those columns without or skipping the column in between. But how can I do it? You can first, starting with the first column, simple, just click, hold and drag to select everything. And then you can press and hold down the control key. And you can go and select the second range that you need. Okay, simple as that. Now let's go to the insert tab and choose the chart, the line chart, this one. Click, and yeah, that's it. We're done. So this is how we can do it. Very simple. Uh, maybe the problem with this question is how could we select the months and the total cost, skipping the column in between. But okay, we are very smart and we know how to use the control key. The chart now, the line chart is showing us the evolution of the total cost in e stock throughout the months. Let's move on to the last question, but not least important. In order to improve the data set, highlight the quantities, okay, quantity received, and you start using an automatic gradient. So let's say um, we can use many different methods here, but uh, to automate use a gradient, we cannot manually highlight those values. Let's say the lowest value is maybe probably 5,000, roughly 5,000. So if I go to the home tab and use a reddish color, and take the, the largest ones and use a green color and the ones in the in between use a yellowish color it's going to be you know it's kind of okay however if any of those values change let's say i don't have any more five thousand but i have ten thousand right here and then i'm gonna press enter the value continues to be highlighted with the redwish color but how can we automatically set a gradient right here let me undo those actions. One, two, three, four. Okay. I can select everything and use the conditional formatting in Excel. Home tab to the right conditional formatting. And it's very easy to know what is the option that we need to use. Color scales. And then you can choose any set of options that you like the most. Maybe I can keep up with the first one. That is a gradient using green, yellow, and red color. Now, the largest value is going to be highlighted with a darker green. The lowest one with a darker red and the ones in between yellowish greenish uh, orange and so forth and if i change and update any value as i did before 10,000, and i hit enter look what is going to happen with the highlight of this specific cell one two three enter now uh, this new cell is going to be updated with the new color but let me undo this action okay so this is how we can solve all those eight different questions. And I really hope those questions, functions, tools, features in Excel can help you out. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow because every day has a new video.